uh, uh, that we need to talk about this morning, health-related uh, issues. Uh, we're here to talk, a, to talk about a couple of different things, as well as to uh, provide some information to the public on upcoming forums. And we're going to start with Lincoln's designation as a let's move city and the next steps that we want to take as we work to become the healthiest city in America. Uh, joining me today are the, are the F Street uh, Rec Center walkers. Let me see the hands of the walkers. All right. Welcome. And members of the GO team who represent organizations uh, here in town dedicated to health improvement. Can I see the hands of the GO team members? Thank you for coming this morning. Anna Wishart's here. Anna's uh, our representative on the Airport Authority Board, but more importantly to me, she's uh, our community representative for the Let's Move campaign. So. Uh, she and Judy Halstead, our health director, who is standing right beside her, uh, they do all the work while I talk about what they get done. <laughs> Mr. Tom Kay is uh, here to join us today. He has uh, a wonderful personal health story to tell, and uh, we're anxious to hear from him. And then a couple of old hands who have been contributing to the community in a very meaningful way for a long, long time. Lori Seibel with the Community Health Endowment and Joan Anderson uh, with the Lancaster County Medical Society. Uh, I have been recently chosen to be one of the few mayors from around the country that was asked to uh, come to Washington by the National League of Cities and by the White House to participate in further discussions with respect to what we can do as communities to uh, reverse the trend of rising obesity among both children and adults uh, in this country. And that invitation to me came because of you and because of organizations in this city uh, because we were a Let's Move City and because we received uh, special recognition for our emphasis on healthy living here in Lincoln. I am convinced that obesity is a very serious problem for our city and for our state and for our country. It's a problem with huge ramifications for both individuals and for society. We know that being obese increases the risk and the severity of many chronic diseases like diabetes and heart disease and many cancers, arthritis, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, stroke, and even more. And we are seeing these diseases begin at an ever increasing earlier age. A few years ago, it was almost unheard of for an elementary school student to be diagnosed with diabetes, high blood pressure, or high cholesterol. Today, unfortunately, these diagnoses are much more common. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention um, say that chronic illnesses account for 70% of deaths and at least 75% of health costs in our nation. We can assume that these numbers are generally true for our community. The personal cost in terms of quality of life is unmeasurable. While life expectancy in this country has increased to an all-time high, the quality of life has not increased along with those extended years. We may be living longer, but we are not living better, and chronic diseases are the major cause. These chronic diseases are preventable or can be delayed by making good health choices. The common denominators in most chronic diseases are obesity and physical inactivity. We rightfully focus much attention on the prevention of childhood obesity, 
but we also must focus on adults. No matter our age, it's never too late to start making healthy choices. Even small changes can make a big difference in the long term. Today, I'm challenging our community to make healthy living a top priority. There is much that we are already doing, but there is more that we can do. This challenge requires agency cooperation as well as individual responsibility. My challenge is aggressive, but by working together, I truly believe that we can achieve our goals. Five years from now, I want to be able to say to you that we have made significant prog progress in becoming, indeed, the healthiest city in America. When we work together, we were able to reduce tobacco use. We can use similar approaches to urge residents to be more active, to make healthy food choices, and to lower our obesity rates. So to give us a starting point here, Judy Halstead with our health department is going to give us uh, some information on where we are now, how many of us are overweight or obese, how much physical activity we're getting, how close we're coming to eating the recommended five servings of fruit and vegetables every day. Judy? Good morning. I am Judy Halstead. I'm the health director for Lincoln and Lancaster County. And I have to thank Mayor. It's so exciting for me to be in a place where our mayor cares about the people in our community and the health of our community. Um, you hear a lot about the development that's happening in Lincoln and the construction that's happening in Lincoln and new roads and new buildings. But um, for a health director to have a mayor who's so supportive of making inroads um, in the health status of the community is tremendous. And so I want to thank Mayor and I hope each of you will as well. Um, as Mayor said, our, one of our successes that we've worked toward in this country and locally has been the impact of tobacco use in our community. Um, with adults, we have made some small increases, or improvements, excuse me, in the last couple of years. In 2011, 21.8% of our adults were using tobacco, their current tobacco users. And in 2012, we were 21.3, so about a half a percentage point. We are ticking away at those who are truly addicted to tobacco on the adult level. And so that's the, that's the approach that we're trying to work, is encouraging people to quit tobacco use. Um, and to be more healthy because we know that tobacco significantly increases, tobacco use significantly increases the effects of chronic disease. One of our better successes, however, has been with children. If you look at 1991 and some of the, the information's up on the board that I'm going to be talking to you about, and for, uh, for media, we'll have those electronically for you if you wish to use any of those. Um, but when we look at 1991, almost 40 percent of our youth, age, grades 9 through 12, use tobacco. That's almost 40% of 9th to 12th graders use tobacco in 1991. Now we're less than 15%, um, which is wonderful, and that's a terrific improvement. Not only have the youth quit over those years, but what our main focus on with youth is preventing them from starting. And the health department is continuing to work on those efforts, as are many people in the community, to try and work on those. Those are a success, and it's important to keep the aggressive efforts in place, and we want to ideally have no youth begin tobacco use at all. But what we are going to talk about a little bit is some of the other health indicators that Mayor talked about. We're going to talk about um, the chart that represents adult, adults and youth who are overweight or obese. As Mayor indicated, this is a major concern for all of us in the health care industry and all of us who are interested in improving the physical activity that we have. Um, in 2012, which is our most recent data, 24.4% of the adults had a body mass index, and that's what we're measuring is the, the amount, the percentage of fat that's estimated in those individuals' body. 24.4% of the adults had BMIs in the obese range. 37% reported BMIs in the overweight range. Compared to the state and national data, Lancaster County's total overweight and obesity numbers are slightly less. However, when you combine those, nearly two-thirds of our adult population in Lancaster County are either overweight or obese, and this has to change. 
The chart also shows the youth in grades 9 through 12. And again, you've heard a lot about initiatives going on in the community for younger age children, which are wonderful. Michelle Welch is here from Lincoln Public Schools, and she's working to implement um, wonderful strategies to help youth and the faculty at Lincoln Public Schools help with um, improving the obesity for the youth. But the percentage of youth in the overweight category has shown a steady increase, while the percentage in the healthy weight range has decreased. And we're concerned about that. These are our high school age students. In, tw in 2013, the data reports that 28.9% of our youth are at risk for being overweight or overweight, while the percent of youth in the healthy weight range has decreased to 68.6%. Our local health statistics are reflective of what's happening and why the Let's Move campaign even exists. Um, it's created, it was created to address childhood obesity epidemic and why Mayor Beitler has signed on to it for our campaign, because we have to improve the outcomes for our children. The health challenge that Mayor has set forward has to reduce obesity among adults from the current 24.4% to 15% in the next five years, and to increase the percentage of youth who are at a healthy weight from the current 68.6 to 80% in the same time period. A way to do that are the next two things that we're going to talk about. And the reason that we've, we're identifying these two are because you can make an impact as individuals without any additional cost, without um, having to have special medications or other things. We're talking about increasing the amount of physical activity and changing the way we're eating. So what we'll talk about next is the physical activity charts. Um, we're we are designated as a Let's Move City because we should be physically active. So how are we doing in Lancaster County? We're, we're doing okay, but we're not doing as well as we should be doing. For physical activities among adults, what we count is 30 minutes of physical activity at least five days a week. That's the standard or the goal that we have for adults. Um, and our most recent data measure is from 2011. In that year, 52.2% of adults, only about half of the adults in Lancaster County, were getting 30 minutes of physical activity five days a week. We need to improve that. Um, we were slightly, the percentage was slightly greater than the state and about the same as the national. Mayor's physical activity challenge to the community is to increase that just a little bit over half of our adults to three quarters of our adults, or 75% of our adults getting the recommended physical activity of 30 minutes a day at least five days a week. Keep in mind, and Anna's going to talk a little bit about some of those strategies, but keep in mind those 30 minutes don't all have to be at the same time. You can break those 30 minutes up in the course of a day. So even if you can only walk 10 or 15 minutes at a time, do a couple of walks at those 10 or 15 minutes and try to break those down. And, and those are, Anna's gonna talk in a few minutes about some of the other easier ways to do that. For youth, the measure is a little bit different. We want at least 60 minutes of activity at least three days a week. And what we really want is that youth are, are outside or inside having physical activity and away from screen time. Um, we, we've realized over the last couple of decades that as the technology has increased and the accessibility to that technology for kids, we do have children that are doing too much screen time and not enough playing outside in physical activity time, and so we want to make sure we increase that. Actually, when we've looked at Lancaster County, um, we, we can see that in 2013, 75.5% of the youth reported this level of physical activity compared to 70.7 in 2011 and 58.5 in 2009. We like the look of that trend, but we'd like to see that even better. We'd like to see 85% of our youth meeting that in the next five years. And then lastly, I'd like to talk about fruit and vegetable consumption, because from a perspective of the health director, this is pitiful for Lancaster County. We need to be doing a much better job at eating the recommended five fruits and vegetables a day. When we look at um, 2001, excuse me, 2011, for adults, 15.9%. So fewer than 16% of the adults in Lancaster County in 2011 were eating the recommended five fruits and vegetables a day. When we think about what that looks like, um, there's a display that's available called My Plate, um, and that talks about half of the plate being fruits and vegetables. That's a big change for us, but can remember fruit juices and those other kinds of things also will count, and Anna will talk about that in a minute. Our youth, unfortunately, and again, we're talking about high school age children, so we're not talking about the young children, but our high school age children are showing a slight decline in the amount of fruits and vegetables. They're going the wrong direction. 
Um, when we looked at 2009, 17% of the 9th through 12th graders were eating the recommended five fruits and vegetables a day. In 2011, it was 18.9. But our most recent of 2013 is only 16.2%. So we need to be focusing on our youth, setting a good example for the youth, but also giving that. For Mayor, his challenge is that we have 25% of our youth and our adults eating the recommended five fruits and vegetables every day. As we move forward, we're looking at the opportunity to partner with many organizations in the community to help to try to make this message um, something that everybody knows what their measures should be. All the adults and the children know what they should be doing as far as physical activity and getting the word out about how well we should be eating and having healthy choices in our eating and what a difference that makes. And so I would ask all of you to join us in, in doing that. The health department is very committed to doing that and to making sure that the community is aware of that. So I want to thank everybody for being here. And um, Anna's going to be coming up. Mayor's going to introduce Anna to talk about some of the easy ways that you can make some changes. Thank you, Judy. Anna, come on up. As I indicated to you, Anna's representing us uh, in the Let's Move campaign, and she's going to give you some advice too, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm going to get up on my stool. <laughs> well, thank you, everybody, for allowing me to be part of this incredible initiative. You know, I'm fairly new to it, and just learning about what everybody is doing and has been doing for years has been a really inspirational experience. Um, I am, as the mayor said, his representative and his spokesperson for Let's Move Lincoln, and it is a campaign I am very proud to be part of. And locally, the movement that we're really pushing for is called the 54321 GO movement, and we have a GO team, and there are many faces here today who are on that team. And most of you know what 54321 stands for, but for those of you who don't, I'm just gonna spell it out really quickly. So it's five servings of fruits and vegetables a day, it's four servings of water, it is three servings of low-fat dairy, two or less hours of screen time, and one or more hours of exercise. And I would really encourage everyone to put that up on their fridge and try to commit to that every day because we really want this to be about adding value to your life instead of telling people what they need to restrict from their life. So thank you, Go Team, again for being here and for the good work you are doing. So I'm here today to give you a few tips on how we can all succeed with the Mayor's Challenge. And instead of making several life style changes all at once, it's recommended that we make some small changes towards our end goal. So there are three main areas everyone can make changes to improve their health. The first is eating healthy foods, the second is physical activity, and the third is not smoking. So I'm going to focus today on nutrition and physical activity. So I recently heard a statement that I think says it best. Eat more foods that grow on trees and plants and eat less food manufactured in plants. So it's proven that eating five or more servings of fruits and vegetables every day is good for our bodies. So let's find ways to get more fruits and vegetables into our meals every day. So now I'm going to talk about some really simple steps to do that. So the first and foremost, don't skip breakfast. So if you're short on time for breakfast, some things that you can do is spread some peanut butter on a waffle, put some fruit on top of it, fold it up, and head out the door. Another thing you can do is grab a piece of fruit and a piece of yogurt and a Ziploc bag with you with some whole grain cereal and you're good to go as well. Also, try to have a nutrient-dense snack two to three hours after breakfast or lunch. An example of that would be a piece of fruit or a granola bar that has fruit in it. Or you can, this is my favorite, you can sprinkle some cinnamon on apples and pair that with a slice of cheese. Another way to make healthy substitutions for your lunch or dinner would be to order a side salad or vegetable soup instead of french fries with our meals. Another tip is to add more vegetables to our casseroles and pastas than the recipe calls for. And that's a great way to sneak in vegetables for kids as well. So if you are craving dessert, we can increase our nutrition instead of calories by topping off sliced fruit and berries with a small scoop of ice cream instead of the other way around. 
And then another way we can increase our daily fruit and vegetables include keeping a bowl of fruit in plain sight on the counter, and especially in your office. It's great, instead of having candy set out, have a bowl of apples for people to take and for you to eat as well. We can also cut up vegetables, like on a Sunday, them so they're ready to go for the week as quick and easy snacks. And then lastly, and this is really, really enjoy our food. So instead of sitting in front of the TV and eating, have your family gather around the table and enjoy dinner together and really focus on the taste and what you're eating and, and the good company. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about physical activity. So these, these are ways that we can help beat our stress, our anxiety, and help control get better sleep by increasing our physical activity in our day. So to gain these benefit, benefits, it's recommended that adults be physically active for at least 30 minutes most days, and children be physically active for at least 60 minutes most days. I would challenge adults to get, if your kid's getting in 60 minutes, try to get 60 minutes as well in your day. So physical activity, it does not mean only exercise where you're sweating and you, you hate every moment of it. It also includes using the stairs instead of elevators, parking further away to walk to the building, gardening, playing with your children and doing housework and yard work. So anything that gets us up and moving is physical activity. And again, you don't have to commit to 30 minutes at one time or 60 minutes at one time, but these are things you can add up throughout your day. So a few ways we can sneak in some physical activity would be taking a walk around the neighborhood before or after dinner with your family or friends. And another thing is, and I do this, is if you have meetings set up, ask if everyone would like to do a walking meeting instead during your work day. That, that works out really well and you'll be surprised at how many people are grateful that you took that initiative. So another thing is uh, trying out several activities rather than just sticking to one activity. And then also, instead of rewarding ourselves with a sweet treat or watching TV, we can instead go to the park or walk around the farmer's market. And then lastly, I would say that probably your best exercise buddy is waiting at home for you, wagging their tail. So I would encourage everyone to go home and take your dogs out and include them in sorry, your physical activity for the week. So consider what you do every day and see where simple, helpful changes might be possible and try to make those changes a permanent part of your daily routine. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Anna. Thank you. I think we're asking more of adults than we are of children. I don't know about you, but I have a lot of bad habits to break along the way here. But we're doing it. Uh, so with that, I'd like to introduce Tom Kay. Uh, Tom's a Lincoln native. Uh, who spent 26 years in the uh, Army, Nebraska Army National Guard uh, before retiring as a colonel in the Guard. He taught science to middle school students for about 11 years or so, something yeah. like that. Yeah. And he's also, though, a heart attack survivor. And he's, uh, I want to thank him for being willing to uh, tell his story uh, today for us. Uh, because I think it's a cautionary tale. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Um, you guys, I, I don't know whether you realize it or not, but the way you're receiving this information today is much better than the way I received this information. Everything that is said today, I knew but didn't really believe until I went to cardiac rehab at LifePoint after my heart attack. Talked about nutrition, talked about fruits and vegetables, talked about exercise, talked about obesity, talked about cholesterol, talked about low-fat diets. Everything that's been discussed here today, I heard about in cardiac rehab. You don't want to hear about this in cardiac rehab, believe me. You want to hear about it now. Besides, I think cardiac rehab runs about 200 bucks a day, and it's, and it's three days a week for 10 weeks. 
So just, just based on an expense basis, you don't want to hear about it there. Um, I, was, uh, I was an athlete in high school and in college to a very minor degree. And uh, I was always involved in athletics. Um, right now, I'm as big as I've ever been. I've always been thinner this in, than this, in fact. And uh, when I was in the Army, of course, we had to exercise. And we exercised pretty regularly because it was part of the, part of the um, idea of being in the Army. We were supposed to be fit. It was, a, it was a mandatory thing. So when I retired at age 49, I thought, yes, I don't have to do this anymore. I had, I had been exercising my entire life because, because I wanted to to begin with and then somebody told me to or that I had to in the end. So when I hit 50, I thought, you know, I've been exercising for 35 or 40 years. I've got this in the bank. I'm not overweight. I'm reasonably fit. I don't have to exercise anymore. Well, 10 years went by and I found out otherwise. I had gained maybe eight or 10 pounds over my retirement weight, not a lot, but eight or 10 pounds nonetheless. And I was minding my own business one evening and found out the hard way that without any prior symptoms, that a little chunk of something broke off and found its way to a uh, artery, a coronary artery in my heart that was just narrowed. It wasn't closed, it was narrowed. Thus, no symptoms to begin with, boom. Have you heard of the, uh, of the heart attack known as the Widowmaker? That was me. The next morning I woke up after having received a couple of stints and my first reaction was I was more perturbed than scared. I was more annoyed than anything. I was annoyed that I thought I had put the work in, annoyed that uh, you know, I really hadn't done anything terribly bad uh, although I will say that I took up cooking upon retirement and I was working my way through the Julia Child cookbook. <laughs> a lot of cream, a lot of butter, not a good idea. But little did I know. I still, again, had to find out the hard way. Well, I went to cardiac rehab at LifePoint and they taught me all the things that you've learned today. I started out exercising a very small amount each day, 15 minutes, within 10 days of having had that heart attack, 10 minutes. 15 minutes, that grew into 20 to 30 to 45, which was varied. And to this day, I still exercise on that same basis. 15 minutes of one kind of exercise, 15 minutes of something else, 15 minutes of a third, and 15 minutes of something else to make a fourth for an hour as a minimum, five days a week. Now, I'm a survivor, so I expect I need to do a little more. Some days I do much more than that. I've taken up cycling, which can be a health hazard as well, I found. Uh, three broken ribs, a concussion, a broken hip, and a broken leg in t three years. So maybe I'm just accident prone, I'm not sure. Nonetheless, it's, it's terrific exercise. And for those of you that used to run and want that kind of strenuous exercise, bike will do it, provided you don't fall off. That's the catch. So I guess I'm here to say that, that everything you've heard today is exactly what you need to know. Nutrition, exercise, everything in moderation. Um, I still eat pretty well, I still cook a lot, but the proportions are very small and I'm very conscious of cholesterol and high fat diet, neither of which I do. Haven't been haven't been uh, through a fast food uh, drive through in six years. You just, and you'd be surprised how easy it is to stop. You just stop. But I'm hoping that you can stop doing that and the community can realize they'll stop doing that without having the experience that I had, without having to go to cardiac rehab to find out what they were doing wrong. Thank you. Yes, that was excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much. Well, 
Let me uh, just quickly sum up our uh, five-year community health goals. And let me just say how confident I am that we can reach these goals if the community itself will accept these goals and do and everybody do their part. And I gain confidence in that approach uh, because of our experience with water conservation in the last couple of years. You know, this last year, the community started to really latch on to the idea of uh, not using water unnecessarily or excessively and, and effectively cut down significantly the amount of water totally used in the, in the community during the rough summer months. And if we can, as a community, grab a hold of these health goals, we can do the same thing to our great uh, general benefit. So again, we want to decrease obesity among adults to 15%. That's one. Two, increase the percentage of youth uh, at a healthy weight to 80%. Three, increase to 75% the percentage of adults who get at least 30 minutes of physical activity five or more days each week. Each one of you can do that. Increase to 85% the percentage of youth who get 60 minutes of physical activity three days a week. And finally, to increase to 25% the percentage of adults and youth who eat at least five servings of fruits and vegetables each day. We can do this. Quickly, a second topic for today uh, is also crucial to our future. On October 1st, we start a new phase in assessing health care uh, in this country for those who are not covered. The health insurance marketplace created by the Affordable Health Care Act at the federal level will be a new way for individuals to acquire health insurance. To help individuals in Lincoln learn more about the health insurance marketplace, the Community Health Endowment and the Lancaster County Medical Society are co-sponsoring community forums on the issue. Very, very important community forums. The free forums start uh, September 19th. There are five of them. They're being offered at different locations and different times so that most people should have the opportunity to attend and I really want to commend our Community Health Endowment and the Medical Society for making sure that everybody knows that they have an opportunity uh, to have health care plans available to them and that they can afford. So at this time, I'd, I'd like to introduce Lori Seibel, who is President and CEO of the Community Health Endowment, uh, to give us more specifics. Good morning, Lori. Good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for taking a moment to listen to me talk about what an amazing place Lincoln is when it comes to connecting people. I think um, you can look throughout the community and see examples everywhere of people and agencies who are working to connect people with the right information and the right services. I'm dressed like this this morning um, because right after this, in a few minutes, I'm headed over to Pershing Auditorium, which has been transformed for the next two days into a dental clinic. And uh, if you haven't had a chance to just stop over and stick your head in and look at it, it's amazing. I mean, the whole area, the floor, the seats and everything is now a dental clinic that will provide dental services to more than 1,500 people over the course of the next two days, more than three quarter of a million dollars worth of dental care. And those kinds of things happen in our community all the time and it's because people are trying to always connect people who need services and information with those services and information. So this is another example of us trying to do that on a very important topic. And so these forums that the mayor mentioned are gonna be held throughout Lincoln in September and October at different times and different places so that people can find out what their eligibility is related to the marketplace exchanges, what subsidies are available and if they're eligible for them, how they enroll and where they go to enroll. I want to make it very clear that these are not enrollment events. You don't go to these events to enroll in the marketplace. 
you go to learn about how to enroll in the marketplace. And becoming informed about that is going to make this process incredibly easier for anyone who's involved in this. So as you look um, at these particular events, if you have a yourself or a family member, if you are a caseworker, if you are a health provider, make sure that the people that you know and work with take time to attend one of these sessions. We will have an independent expert who will be there to provide an overview of the system, how you can access it, and how you can access it in the easiest possible way. Again, they're not enrollment activities, but they will be the first step to help that enrollment process as easy as, po um, as, easy as possible. So um, these are sponsored by the Community Health Endowment, the Lancaster County Medical Society. We're proud to provide this information to folks so that they can connect to the marketplace exchange um, in our community and we can become, just as the first uh, press conference talked about, a healthier community and our intent is certainly to become the healthiest community in the nation. Thank you. Thank you, Laurie. Uh, let's take questions and Laurie, you can stay up here and Judy, why don't you come on up and we'll uh, entertain questions. Anyone who believes, anyone who doesn't have health insurance, anyone who believes they might qualify for health insurance should attend one of these to learn what, is the, what are the eligibility requirements. How do I find an enrollment spot closest to me? What do I need to take to that appointment so that I'm prepared and I don't have to go back several times to bring additional information? So this partic these particular um, sessions will prepare people by answering their eligibility questions, their subsidy questions, what information I have to have. And again, you do, it doesn't need, be, need to be for you personally. It may be for someone you know, for a um, family member or, or someone that you particularly want to help in this regard. Joan, did you have anything else you wanted to add about those, about that? No, I think she is. Okay. <laughs> and you had Joan, Okay. I'm Joan with the Lancaster County Medical Society. Um, okay, sorry, sorry. Joan Anderson with the Lancaster County Medical Society. One of the things that Lori didn't mention that I would appreciate you sharing, because we're getting calls all the time, I have to enroll by October 1st, and that's absolutely not the case. You can start October 1st, but you have until mid-December to enroll to get coverage January 1. And then actually, the open enrollment for this first year goes clear into March. So we don't want people panicking and calling and saying, oh, I gotta get in October 1st. That'll be one of the things we talk about at this enrollment, uh, these uh, forums. And as Lori said, it really is about people getting information. The timeline has been one of our biggest um, barriers. So right now, I cannot tell you where to go to enroll, but by September 19th, we can. <laughs> And so what we'll have is a takeaway that people can take and say, okay, wherever, and I won't mention names because we're all looking at possibilities. I can go here, there, I can go online, I can do, we'll have a whole list of resources. They're just not in place yet. Okay, you all set? Yeah, there are a variety of programs and techniques, and I'll let Judy go over some of those. Um, obviously, one of the, when we look at the youth and what activities are happening, it's wonderful to have a resource like Michelle at Lincoln Public Schools, and our other schools, our, our private and parochial schools, are also working at wellness initiatives and looking at starting with the youth. That's a priority. Our schools have to be part of that conversation with our youth. For adults, we have a number of different programs at the health department and a number of other programs across the community of individuals who provide wellness opportunities, um, some for a cost and some at no cost. 
um, as an example, there's what's called the Living Well Program, which is a program for individuals who already have chronic disease who want to improve their lifestyle. That's a very hard population to um, motivate into changing their lifestyle because they almost feel like they give up. And we want them to know that they don't have to give up if they have a chronic disease, if they have diabetes or they have high blood pressure, that there are programs and resources available, even at no cost, to help them learn about managing um, their weight, looking at increasing physical activity. Um, and we have a number of different programs, and I can give you some specifics on those. But for our youth, we obviously want to encourage the schools to continue those activities to promote healthy eating and improving physical activity for kids. And we certainly want to engage encouraging both public entities and private entities, companies, Absolutely. and the city of Lincoln itself to begin to uh, envision and effectuate beneficial programs of one type of one type or another within their companies and within their organizations uh, and to start making changes to health health care plans and uh, office routines and practices uh, and the health department has uh, a program already that's designed to be helpful to companies uh, in setting up these kinds of programs. All right, thank you very much. Thank you for coming today.